Well, the primary season is underway and a controversy about a sentencing recommendation. Those are the headlines this week in politics and Loyola Marymount University Professor Michael Genovese is here to give us some insight. And we want to start with uh, Roger Stone. The Department of Justice adjusted the sentencing recommendation after a series of tweets from the president. What's the normal relationship between the Department of Justice and the Oval Office? Well, what was done was unprecedented. Mm -hmm. I did a survey of the past and you find that presidential efforts to influence justice mm -hmm. are very, very rare and usually quite private. Mm -hmm. This is the opposite. It's frequent and it's public. So I suppose we should give the president credit. At least he's not doing it behind the scenes. He's mm -hmm. doing it very openly. Mm -hmm. But the tradition is you want to have a hands-off president because mm -hmm. you never want to politicize justice or even give the appearance of politicizing justice because it undermines the rule of law. It's gotten so bad, though, that a federal judge, a Republican-appointed federal judge, said the other day, that Donald Trump is making us into a banana republic. So it's noticeable and it's damaging. Mm. What do you think of Attorney General Barr's pushback against the president's tweets? Well, you know, there's zero separation between the president and his attorney general. Mm -hmm. But Barr's position is, give me some room to maneuver. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're tying my hands because by so publicly tweeting about this, you're not allowing me to do your bidding for you in private, mm -hmm. behind the closed doors. Um, I'm a willing accomplice. I will sort of tear down some of the guardrails of democracy for you. Mm -hmm. I'm on board. I can't do it if you shine a spotlight on that. So best for you to keep quiet and let me do that for you. Mm -hmm. And now to the race for the White House. When you look at the numbers from Iowa and New Hampshire, center-left moderate candidates are drawing more support than the far-left progressives. What do you really make of it? Well, you know, I, but it's reflective of Iowa and New mm -hmm. Hampshire, very unrepresentative, rural, mm -hmm. conservative, and very white. Uh, you have to remember, though, in all of February, there's only 4% of all delegates that are available. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very early. And I think while those first races are symbolically rich, they're delegate poor. Mm -hmm. So the Democratic demolition derby begins now. Mm -hmm. And it's March 3rd and the week after that. March 3rd is, of course, Californian Super mm -hmm. Tuesday. The week after that is another Super Tuesday. Before that, you've got Nevada, which is going to hurt, I think, Biden. Uh, and you've got um, uh, March Madness coming up, and mm -hmm. that's going to be the key. Mm -hmm. Well, Joe Biden didn't do well in Iowa or New Hampshire. Do you think he can recover? He's been wounded. He's been mm -hmm. wounded perhaps fatally. Uh, he, he did much poorer than expected. Mm -hmm. And so I think what you're seeing is it's the Pete and Bernie show right now. Mm -hmm. And as the herd thins out, Mm -hmm. uh, the competition to become the alpha dog intensifies. Biden is entering these Nevada and later on next week, South Carolina primaries wounded, perhaps fatally so. So he has to do really well. But for him, because he's done poorly early, the money is dried up. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in Nevada, he expected the culinary workers to endorse him. The union didn't. That'll mm -hmm. hurt him. Everything for Biden is dependent on one date, mm -hmm. That's February 29th, South Carolina. If he does poorly there, you can put a fork in him, he's done. Mm, okay, and you know, there are a lot of complaints about the lack of diversity in Iowa and New Hampshire. Would it be better to actually have the first, well, South Carolina, Nevada, Iowa, and New Hampshire vote on the same day? There are a lot of ways that you could alter and should mm -hmm. alter the primary process. You could rotate which states go first and second, mm -hmm. although uh, New Hampshire has in its, I think, a state constitution or law that it has mm -hmm. to go first. But the parties can determine that. You could have a regional primary, you could have rotation. There's all kinds of things you could do, but, but clearly there's an inherent bias in having those two go first. It's a bias towards moderates, which may not be bad for the Democratic Party or the Republican Party because it gives a little bit of a boost to more moderate candidates. Having said that, still you have two women in the race. Mm -hmm. And so there is some diversity, but the first two states, white, rural, more conservative, are biased against women, minorities, and really, I think, in general, some, sometimes the left or the right of the parties. Mm. All right. Professor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We always appreciate your insight. Thank you, Amy.